in the old days, we used to call this Uligatami, arm lock, before it kind of branched off and got its own name. It's, it's now called Kanuki Gatami. Kanuki is like a, a, a bolt or a latch on a door. And it's an old figure four arm lock. You know, they do it in pro wrestling. They do it in all kinds of stuff. Jiu-jitsu, certainly not in judo as well, uh, and sambo. So we're going to take a look at this. Sandy always had a really sneaky way to get into this from the bottom when she was competing. So I'm going to have her show this. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, we'll take them. So go ahead. You're down here and they're in your guard, especially if they grab up here. So, you know, any place you point on the pillow, it's really easy to do. It's good to be around. And this is the bottom here. Hand goes on the shoulder, your hand press, walk onto your wrist. Can, right here. Real quick, guys. Mm -hmm. Come on back out again. Look, if they're reaching, however they're reaching, they might be down to push up against your knee, your hand, your hip, whatever. Whatever the situation, she's going to trap. Okay, so yeah, go ahead and do your thing. And when she does that, it hooks. Now, what Sandy did, what a lot of good people who are very good at this, her forearm is right under Mike's elbow. That's the bar. That's the, there's the fulcrum there, okay? Mm -hmm. Make sure you pull that little hand tight against your body to keep his arm trapped so he can't pull that. That's a key thing. That's a key thing. Now, you guys with the camera, watch. When she does this, she's going to do something on his shoulder that is very effective. So, so go, ahead, go ahead and finish up. So if I do this, my other hand comes up here. This hand is pushing. And back a little bit into this as I pull this in. This by itself almost will lock and keep it tight. Then I want to make sure I grab my wrist and put my hand that went up and under his arm. Okay? Even to that point, you sometimes will get to tap immediately. Then what I do is I pop forward. Now, how she adds more torque to this, when she applies this, this Kanuki Gatami here, when she comes up, what do you think? Now when she does this, watch, she's going to add some torque as she rolls this direction and she rolls and watch what she does with her knee. She rolls so that sometimes you also used to jam your knee in there, didn't you? They're not tapping right away. Yeah, go, go ahead and jam your knee in there. See how she does that. What I'm doing is I'm pushing them into it, I'm pulling them into it, and I'm barring them down into it at the same time. And he's totally locked up from here on down. There's probably any wiggle room at all. And that's what makes it work so well. So in the old days, we called this Udigatami. It was a variant of Udigatami, but now we're seeing more and more people call it Kanuki Gatami. I know the Kodokan is not named at that, but a lot of people have, certainly in Jiu Jitsu. Even for some of you guys that are a little bit taller, if you can't quite get in tight enough to get in here and there doesn't work it, you can also pop, push them back and get even more, and then pop over. It makes them stretch on even further for you guys who've got longer bodies. Right. Can you show they give the feet? Here, here, here. If it's not working, I push that. I'm just pushing in his hip and pushing him downwards. And then I bring this back down. It's, it's a great unexpected move from the body. You know, if the guy starts to reach for you, just overhook and, and, and take it from there. Just real quick. Just be real quick with it. Roll. If that don't work. Push and give it again. Give it a go. Pretty simple, but it works really well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, simple, almost always simple. It's not simplistic. It's simple. It means it's effective, right? Let's give it a go. Let's look at this. Is a, a, a variation of what we just did here on the Kanuki Gatami that Derek's going to do here. What we're looking at here is with now we have locked his arm up. We've got all the, the fulcrum working, everything there. But what he's going to do is use his legs a little differently than what you just saw Sandy do. Okay, so take it from there if you can. Okay, so the first thing I usually try and do as I'm capturing the arm, so as, as we're, we're coming around or through to try and catch this, okay, you wanna make sure that you're pulling him down and making him put his, his weight there. Otherwise, if he's able to sit back, you know, he, he pulls his arm right back out again. So you pull him down and then I switch over to the far lapel 
Can everybody see this? How he's shifting it? Why don't we do this with his right hand on Mike's more lapel? So, normally I'm pulling down on this side while I'm looping through, and then I'll come across and they start thinking choke, and they forget that their hand is on the mat. And then from there, this allows me not to have to worry about putting my hand so much in there. And I, I always try and, and get upside down with it anyways. So as I'm coming across, I come out, and if I don't get a tap right there, it'll usually get a tap right about here. Okay? And if you happen to let go of the, uh, the lapel halfway through, you keep your hand pretty tight. And then right about when you're going belly down, that gives you a, a good shoulder and elbow lock at the same time. Did everybody see the use of his right leg, his, his shin and foot on the back of Mike's shoulder and head? And that's a real good control point. You want to point that out? please? And it's, it's basically like you're trying to do a head roll juji with it. And about halfway through the head roll, he's going to start tapping. And the reason is, is that you're pushing his head down while you're barring his arm already. Okay, so again, catch, come through, his hand's on the mat, I'm gonna slip across and either grab this one or switch through and grab that one, okay? And then as soon as I do that, I'm gonna kind of butt out a little bit to get enough space to go over, okay? So butt out, he goes down, okay? And you're using your forearm to push into his, uh, his armpit to get him to go down as you make space with your hips, okay? And then up, and right about there you should get the tap. And if you don't, I'm gonna loosen up so and kill Mikey here. You put your shin right there in the back of his head, and then you hip in, and you get your tap. It should be about three-fourths of the way through. So as you get better at it, you'll just start with your hand right here on the far lapel, okay? Bring it in, slip it out, okay? Foot over, and there's your tap. Time, lapel. Okay, pull him down, he put his hand on the mat, slip your hand across, okay? And as I push my butt back that way, I'll get up on this elbow, my foot comes out, and again, I'm in my classic hip hook with my foot there, going in almost to a, a head roll juji. But as soon as this comes in, you're hipping in, and you're getting that tap. And the, the main difference there is, again, when I'm hitting the, the head roll juji, I've got his arm in front of me, so he can bend it. Here, I'm barring it already. So by the time my hips get over there, his arm is basically going back like that. So you're getting a good shoulder crank and a good elbow crank at the same time. And putting your hand through here is a really good way to get that, that bar on the arm and to force him over enough that you can actually step your foot over and hip into it. And again, since I got the, the cross lapel grip, he has a very hard time trying to, to run away. If I just had his arm here and I was trying to do this, okay, he can actually start running away from that. But I've got his lapel, so he's pretty much stuck there. He tries to run, go ahead. can't go anywhere without that shoulder and I've already got this shoulder. Good? Makes sense? <laughs>